Now, political news is always useful. There is a new Japanese Prime Minister named Yukio Hatoyama. I'm probably mispronouncing it, but that's my best guess. And consequently, there is a new First Lady of Japan named Mayuki Hatoyama. She's 66 years old. She's a former dancer, singer, actress, and she's widely traveled. She has been to Venus, as she announced in an interview. Quote, while my body was sleeping, I think my spirit flew on a triangular-shaped UFO to Venus. It was an extremely beautiful place and was very green. Now she admits that her husband, a previous husband, told her it must be a dream. Her husband had the nickname the Alien given to him by his fellow members of Japanese parliament, the Diet. Because of his protruding eyes, I think he was an alien and that it was a cover-up. <laughs> Still, I must admit, I have my doubts about her story. But then I remembered Bucky Nelson, an Ozark farmer who in 1955 was taken to Venus in a flying saucer. And he said that Venus was very nice, better than the Ozarks. <laughs> now apparently the Venusians let him take a single photograph of a giant Venusian telepathic dog, which by coincidence was a dead ringer for his own dog. <laughs> and the Venusian leader, which by another coincidence was named Bucky Jr., <laughs> told Bucky how to solve all the world's problems. And Bucky said, unfortunately I can't pass it on yet, we're not ready for it. And he also said, read his experience of riding the flying saucer, I couldn't see the sun because it was very dark in space. <laughs> well, I had my doubts about his story too, but considering that Mayuki had an almost identical experience, they both went to Venus, she's confirmed Bucky's story. So thank goodness Bucky is vindicated at last. So, to Mayuki Hatoyama goes the special Bucky Nelson verification Elrond. <laughs> is the planet Venus with its beautiful oceans and verdant lush jungle meadows <laughs> by happy happy joy joy Venusians and for sleepless nights when she's unable to astral travel the fly saucer will come in quite handy. <laughs> I couldn't resist showing two photographs of Bucky, plus a bit of artwork which includes the dog that appeared in a Look magazine article about him. So that is Bucky Nelson. His ears are rather large, I suspect. I wonder just how human he is. But at any rate, his trip confirmed. Now, something closer to home for fans. Many of you may be aware that the U.S. Science Fiction Channel has changed its name from <laughs> Sci-Fi Channel to Sci-Fi Channel, except it is now spelled S Y. I was going to get to that. You're stepping on my lines. <laughs> it's now pronounced, for those who haven't heard, I mean spelled S Y F Y, so it's now being pronounced City. <laughs> Their press release explained why. Science fiction is merely a generic entertainment category. But City, or well, they say sci-fi, recognizes a broader range of programming with something for everyone. In other words, now they can still call themselves a sci-fi channel but put anything on it they want. <laughs> sci-fi is a generic concept, but their spelling of sci-fi is something they own. No one else can use it. They own it now, and I say now, because it used to be the intellectual property of Michael Hinman, a fan who called his website that, starting in 1998. The channel bought it from him, paying a substantial fee. And they now claim that they independently invented it. He merely copied them. <laughs> Hinman is a bit put out for not being credited, but he said it was a substantial fee, so it really doesn't matter. <laughs> Now, purists in science fiction prefer the original term that was commonly used by fans for many, many years, and even now by purists, which is SF. They didn't like sci-fi, they pronounced it Skippy. Well, now we have a sci-fi that's pronounced Sippy. 
with connotations of syphilis. <laughs> Bearing that in mind, I give, and there's some symbolism here, I give to the Sci-Fi Channel, the Sifi Channel, the special unprotected sci-fi intellectual property needs an allegorical condom, Elron. Yeah. And if I had had time, I would probably have gotten a condom and tried to fit it. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm not sure it would have worked. Anyway, speaking of sci-fi, some of you may not know that the term was invented in 1955 by Forrest J. Ackerman uh, while driving down the Los Angeles freeway listening to the radio. And as he reported, the logic pattern went something like this. Listening to the radio, sure is tinny. Too bad he didn't have a high fidelity set up in his car. Good quality listening equals hi-fi. Hmm, good quality reading equals sci-fi. And he began pushing that. Purists still do not like the term. I think it's perfect for the simple reason that even non-fans know exactly what it means. Now, some of you may not know that uh, he was to be the fan guest of honor at Recon 15 in 1987. Uh, Al Bats, who was chair at the time, had invited him. Unfortunately, an illness prevented him from attending. And so he was not, uh, and he already agreed to receive an Elrond for inventing sci-fi to be presented to him by Mr. Science. But it was not, in fact, awarded. He was not there. And it was felt that an affectionate tribute might be misinterpreted by some as some kind of insult. So he didn't get it. He passed away this year at a very old age. He was a uh, number one fan in science fiction fandom for decades. He was the very first person to wear a science fiction costume at the first World Cup in 1939 in New York City. Uh, he's renowned for, well, let me give you my personal uh, approach. He inspired my lifelong interest in science fiction and monsters. Here's issue 20 of his famous Monsters of Film and Magazine from 1962. Who but for it would put a painting representing Lon Chaney Sr., who had been dead for many years, in the movie London After Midnight, which is a film that is lost, and no one can see it, and aim it at 11-year-olds like myself at the time. <laughs> With the heading, read about the man who saw King Kong 90 times. <laughs> who would be interested in that? Me. <laughs> <laughs> and in fact, for his motto was, Lon Chaney Sr. shall not die, he re-inspired an interest in silent genre films, and indeed in genre films completely. And who's the guy who saw King Kong 90 times? Ray Harryhausen. The article in here is about how Ray Harryhausen started doing animated films when he was a teenager and went on to become an Academy Award winning uh, special effects guy. And I thought, well, I can do that too. And I did. Plasticine Martians and HO scale of train sets. I haven't quite got to the Academy Award bit yet. <laughs> anyway, he gave me a lifelong hobby, lifelong interest. He inspired others, people like Joe Dante, uh, Spielberg, John Carpenter, and Stephen King. They were all teenagers who wrote Famous Monsters in those days, how much they loved it. He was one of a kind, absolutely one of a kind, unique to himself. And therefore, in affectionate memory, to Forrest Ackerman, the special certified genuine original album. Before he was converted. 